thank you, Vashek, for the invitation and thanks for the uh, brief introduction. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll just start and I'll share my screen with the presentation right now. As Vashek previously mentioned, I will talk uh, very briefly because we don't have enough time uh, about the situation in Prague, because as he said, I'm a member of uh, NGO, which is trying to be engaged in, uh, in a process of urban development in Prague, uh, me together with Vashek and uh, several other our colleagues who are trying to promote some principles of sustainable urbanism and participatory democracy in a, like participatory project that are that are taking place in Prague right now uh, me myself I was involved in some uh, participatory projects as a researcher from 2014 onwards so I have a perspective of the of the participatory de participatory development from I would say both sides from the applied sides and uh, from the other side from the uh, side of the engaged anthropology me myself I'm anthropologist so my presentation will be trying to show some like theoretical backgrounds that can be shown on the examples of uh, current development. So uh, if we start with the, uh, with, with the practice, uh, we'll see that there is a, uh, th there is a brownfield uh, in Prague. I, I took a particle case, which is Bubnizatory, which is the big development area, former uh, transport railway station. And it was participated in 2018 and 19, as far as I remember, and we were uh, uh, we were engaged in that process. And at first, it has to be said that there was a uh, before that there was a lots of participatory project in Prague because from uh, 2013 or 14 onwards, there was a big agenda uh, implemented by the city that was aimed on the participatory. Uh, participatory planning. Uh, the city created so-called manual of participation, uh, which they are right now trying to implement all around Prague. Uh, this particular big uh, project uh, was one of those uh, leading projects of the participation. So there was a long-term uh, long project that was based on, on the guided walks with, with the urbanists. There were some participatory planning sessions and in the end there was an open window for comments and complaints so we were engaged in that uh, we we were working on the like when when we see the first version of the uh, of the urban study that was made uh, then we started to study it and we made some comments and complaints and we realized that there are some problems. As you see, I, I was, I'm referring here in the, in the presentation, you can see that there's a very weird propor proportion of inhabitants uh, versus jobs. Uh, and we identified that there's lack of affordable housing, lack of climate change mitigation, and also the lack of civic amenity. So we, we, we tried in our comments and complaints, we started we tried to uh, reflect on that. And we tried to engage in the process of implementation or incorporation of those comments into, a, into the final version of the plan. Uh, that took some time. We, we were like there were lots of meetings. We were uh, talking to uh, deputy of urban development in Prague. We we're talking to local municipality officials and politicians from lots of parties. But in the end, we the, the the biggest problem was that from my perspective as an anthropologist, we were talking different languages. In the end, so on one side there is a some sort of like civic and engaged society that consists of NGOs and some individuals that is trying to uh, show the city and its representatives that there are lots of severe problems that could in the end influence the city's uh, livability and so on and so forth. And on the other side, there are, uh, there are officials that all the time they have to negotiate with the developers because the the whole area is owned by 
uh, in fact, the most of the area is owned by the big developers, very powerful men uh, in the Czech society as a whole. So we're negotiating and maybe maybe Washik will uh, later uh, later say something more about it, but I think we uh, that the negotiating wasn't very very successful. What can be like theoretically shown on this particular example and on the other examples that we were involved in, you can see here uh, the other. On the right side, uh, the, the picture, this is from Masaryk Center, which is other big development in Prague, which we were also uh, to try to be engaged in that. We, we made comments, complaints. Uh, in the end, Arnica filed a lawsuit against it, uh, but the, the building itself is right now, it's, 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 it's being built in there. They have a building permission, so uh, all of the activities and all of the uh, statements by, for example, om Ombudsman from Czech Republic, they weren't in the end taken into account. So it was really in interesting and really important. And in the end, when I uh, when I uh, will come back to the, the problem of a theory that is uh, that, that can be put on that uh, phenomenon, we can see something that is by Samuel Steen in his uh, book Capital City described as a capitalist democracy contradiction, which means that uh, although we are trying to implement the particip participatory agenda, uh, the officials and the urban planners that are uh, trying to implement it, they all, at the same time, they have to cope with the developers uh, and their power and and in the end, and I think that is the biggest specificity in the Czech Republic and their private ownership. Uh, because, uh, and I mean that is thing that is common for the countries that are post-Soviet or post-socialist, which uh, underwent a, a big deal of privatization, which means that the private ownership has a really specific uh, position in Czech Republic, which means uh, I always talk about the privatism, which is Sonia Hirt, this, this uh, Canadian Bulgarian sociologist that uh, described this privatism as a condition which uh, tends to uh, sh that tends to show that the private ownership is the best of the ownerships or the maintenance uh, versions. So uh, that is a big problem. So right now we are like living in the in the times that most of the property and the land in the city is owned privately. And it makes a big deal of problems for the urban planners as well as the civic society to negotiate at least uh, very small outcomes for the, for the society. When we look at it in some sort of more theoretical uh, point of view, we can, uh, we can show that this particular phenomenon of capitalist democracy contradiction shows that there is at the same time ongoing process of unblock boxing the urbanism which is uh, uh, which was uh, defined by Graham and Marvin in 2001 in, in their famous book uh, splintering urbanism which by my opinion is very very interesting and uh, it, it could be really fruitful uh, for for analyzing the situation, not only in Prague. Uh, what you see in here, there is a there is a picture of uh, of Prague. This is the this is the ground plan of Prague, and the red dots in there. There are there are only a few, not 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 all of them. There are really int like interesting development projects that are about to be built in uh, the areas. Most of them. Uh, uh, are surrounded uh, by some sort of public upheaval or uh, trying to, people trying to complain against it. When we look at the unblock boxing, the urbanism, it means that uh, that when we started to apply the participatory agenda, those methods and all those like meetings, interviews. Uh, comments and so on. They revealed that the urban planning agenda is, and it has to be mentioned, that was not ever inert or neutral, which means uh, 
that according to Andre Lefebvre or, or other, other scholars, which means that uh, the capitalist public space tends to uh, appear as it is neutral, but in the end it's ideological. It's somehow filled with, uh, with the idea of capital, it's filled with the uh, idea of free market and so on and so forth. So if there is some sort of participatory uh, meeting, you always see that there is a conflict of interest between the public and the private. Uh, but this conflict contains uh, a paradox because within these, and, and we are, I think we are observing it right now in Prague, because within these processes, those emerging conflict between pub public and on the other side, politicians and officers, uh, weaken the position of the participations itself. Uh, which means that uh, lots of politicians, uh, for example, right now in Prague, they are, when we have some sort of meeting, they say, no, no, not everything is uh, necessary to participate. We have to decide on that. We have to decide on what. But in the end, it means that they are trying to somehow like make things on themselves when there is some problem of, I would say, communicative uh, manners. At this point, I'm going to a third point, which means that at, in this environment, severe problems of climate change, spatial segregation, which is really big problem for Prague right now, and crisis of housing remain to be overlooked or unsolved. But uh, it seems like there is a it, it seems like dark end right now. But I, I I don't want to end in this dark manner. So uh, I will say one more thing about the unblack boxing, which is. Uh, by my opinion, very interesting. And is that uh, at the same time, the, the black box, unblack boxing helps to identify the heavily black boxed agenda that remains right now, which means that a big deal of negotiations in Prague with developers remain to be really shady. We don't know anything about what's happening between the officials and between the developers. So, and I identify this as a main problem because uh, unless the owners and most in, in Czech Republic, most powerful stakeholders are, fu are fully engaged, things won't change. And uh, planners can seek whatever they want, but they, they cannot, uh, cannot change the situation because if developers don't want, nothing will change. So in the end, and by this, uh, sentence I will end. It is a tricky game which reveals that part of the stage that we are playing right now is blurry because the richest or the most privileged remain to be pre preserved by the privatist conditions that I was talking before. And this is the thing that we have to change uh, in forthcoming future. Thank you. <laughs>